Hello and welcome to another edition of Issues with Jide. Here we talk about actions and inactions of those who shape our national uh, political landscape and how these impact us positively or otherwise. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Today on the show, we look at uh, Saludo, uh, well, obedience, descent on Governor Saludo's, uh, Saludo over anti Peter OB comments. Also, Saludo risks punishment from Ohaneze. And later on the show, Qatar 2022 a look at prospects of African teams. In the course of the program, we'll take your questions, but first subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop your questions in the comment section. I have joining me via Zoom, the maestro himself, Babaji De Kolari Soju. Thank you so much for joining us on Issues with JD. Brian, and good evening, our viewers. Hmm. Right. Um, Let's begin with um, Governor Wiki and um, Governor, I mean, former Governor and presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Obi. Or before we get there, let's begin with the issue of the, you know, Undigbo, because this, the, the prominent Igbo leaders and leaders, as well as stakeholders and various groups across varied platforms, have continued to express anger over verbal attack on the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, by Governor Charles Ludo. But the governor said he won't succumb to bullies. Do you think Governor Soludo has really stirred a hornet's nest to warrant these attacks? Yes, if you are familiar with the nature of politics in our country, then you will not be surprised at the way Peter B's supporters have descended on the governor of Anambra State. The last thing that supporters of Peter B want to hear is that he cannot win the election. And when the governor said, look, there is no foreseeable path to victory for Peter B, and claim that Peter B is playing a game, he knows that he cannot win and all that. He more than angered Obi supporters. As far as Obi supporters are concerned, he represents the best so there was confusion. Uh, candidate in the race. As far as they are concerned, is the candidate to beat. And they don't like hearing it when you say that Obi has no got structures, we as no go people can work for him in uh, some states or in many states. As far as they are concerned, Obi is riding the crest of stardom. Obi is immensely popular, far more popular than other candidates in the race. And in their view, Obi is not just the candidate to beat. Obi is the candidate that will win the election. So when the governor of Obi state then comes out after first declaring that Obi's investments back uh, in the day as governor have amounted, yeah. uh, amounts to nothing today, that right. was bad enough. That certainly angered them. But following it up, or responding to their insults by going for the juggler, by saying, look, there is no foreseeable path to victory for Peter Obi. There is no way Obi will win this election. Obi knows that he cannot win. He's a joker. <laughs> there is no way that he can, he can uh, defeat the other candidates. He's, he's not going to come in second. By saying that, he clearly angered Obi supporters. And whether we like it or not, a lot of our friends in the Southeast are happy for one reason. They believe that in the Nigerian states, the people of the Southeast have been marginalized thoroughly. They believe that this is the year, this ought to be the year of the Southeasterner to become president of our country. They believe that this ought to be 
even left. This contest ought to be left to the southeast. But that, that's not what we have seen. And Obi, by stepping out of PDP before the primaries began and joining the Labour Party to become the standard bearer of the Labour Party, Obi effectively did something that energized that base, energized those who believe that this is the turn of the Southeast. It's difficult to find people who believe that this is the turn of the Southeast going against Peter Obi. As far as they are concerned, is the best for this time, is the best of all the candidates, the 18 candidates in the race. And when someone comes out to now say, oh, Obi cannot win. Obi is a joker. He has not got what it takes. Uh, his investment uh, uh, on behalf of Anambra states now amounts to nothing. That person has diminished Obi in their eyes. To them, that person is an enemy of progress. In fact, if you uh, see the way the Ohaneze uh, spokesperson uh, described him, he said that he described him as a he described Soludo as a traitor who was out to discredit obese legacies. You know? So as far as he's concerned, how can the state governor of two presidential candidates, a governor whose state produced two presidential candidates? the presidential candidate of ABGA and the presidential candidate of Labour Party come to the conclusion that Obi cannot win. So for the Ohanese, Obi's statement was premature as far as they are concerned. It's too early in the day to declare that Obi cannot win the election. And they even see him as an agent of rival geopolitical zones that do not want the southeast to produce the next president of our country so this is an emotive thing this is the emotions have simply taken over i can tell you that a good number of southeasterners back in obi who are not obi supporters they, they did not really care about obi in the past, even some months back. But by getting into that race and making sure that the Southeast would have someone on the ballot, the presidential ballot, he has energized that base, he has made them happy, he has made them proud. In fact, remember what the governor of Ebony said. He said, it's a thing of joy that the Igbos now have a presidential candidate, one who is strong. That, that is the sort of thing. Yes, he's in a rival party. But even at that, because he could not emerge as a candidate of his own party from the uh, APC primaries, neither did anyone emerge who is of Igbo extraction. From the primaries of the of the PDP of the SDP and uh, many of the well-known parties, but for me to have emerged, for me to have played that game very well and emerged as the presidential candidate of Labour Party, that has made him the hero of a good number of people who believe that this ought to be the turn of the Southeast, and they are prepared to give him their support, whether it is financial, you know, or moral support, they are prepared to give. Now, anybody who steps in to attack Peter Obi would expect the worst of repercussions for, for, for making that happen. I'm not even surprised that some are already talking about impeachment of the governor of, uh, of uh, Anambra State. Some are already saying, look, 
um, so those who forget about the second term, he will not be re-elected. So then, criticizing Peter Obi at this point and declaring that Peter Obi cannot win the election amounts to waging war against the Igbo interest. So this is the way they are seeing it. That the angry way, uh, the angry manner in which Ohanese responded to this uh, quarrel between governors, I mean, two, between a governor and a former governor, underlines the point that I'm making, and that I'm making that for those who believe that this is the year in, I mean, this is uh, the 2023 election is an election that should see an Igbo man emerge as president of our country to such people. Obi represents the best choice. Obi is the hero. Obi is the person that no one should attack. And if anyone attacks Obi, whether that person is Soludo or myself or anybody for that matter, they are going to respond. Obi supporters will respond with indescribable anger. This is what we have been seeing since this, um, this whole thing began. Even for some of us who have tried our best to be objective, you will see that on this show, so many times we have highlighted the uh, successes that Peter will be as recorded, yeah. you know, in this campaign. And we have never for one day said Peter will be is not good enough for the job. But Absolutely. for the fact that we bear the names that we bear, for the fact that we walk where we walk, we, we have seen so Obi supporters come to our wall, our social media handles, to call us all kinds of names, to call us slaves, uh, to, 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 to call us APC supporters, whereas even in their hearts, they know that they do not criticize the APC government as much as I do. The facts are there. But right. for reasons best known to them, they see some of us as opposed to obese emergence. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, uh, BKO. I wonder where the where the evidence for that is. They cannot provide evidence Absolutely. that I dressed down or be at any point in time or that I said or be uh, it's not Yeah. Um let me quickly take this comment um, because we are uh, the, the time is actually fast spent. Uh, Tony Goodman says, Jide, don't you think that Saludo was acting out of wickedness and jealousy because of Obi's rising political profile? I think it should concentrate on the insecurity in the state. Very quickly, if you want to respond to that. I don't think, I don't think. Uh, uh, he merely spoke his mind. Sometimes when we speak our minds, uh, whatever we say, uh, gets misinterpreted, gets given all kinds of meanings. Uh, that is the thing. Um, I don't think that he did that out of selfishness or, I mean, jealousy. He expressed his view. So there are many people, too, who have the same belief, but will never say it outside. Who would publicly say that Obi will be defeated, even if they are convinced in their heart of hearts that Obi cannot win the election, they will never say that Obi will be defeated because they will face. Okay, so let's let's change talk by looking at. Um you know, Governor Ye still an OB though, but then this time around, Governor Ye some week of River State pledged to provide logistic support for the campaigns of the Labour Party uh, presidential candidate uh, Peter Obi within the state, but had also advised him not to invest his money in reverse politics. A, a lot of people have given multiple interpretations to this. In what context do you, con do you understand what message the Governor was passing? He said clearly that he was convinced that Peter Obi uh, was a man 
of character, of, of uh, competence, um, and of uh, capacity. So as far as he's concerned, Peter will be is a man who can get the job done. He said that Wiki said it clearly that Peter will be had worked hard for his people, had served his people, and had been consistent over the years, and, and that will be who get the job of fixing Nigeria uh, done. You know, he said that. Then he said, look, whenever you are here to campaign in River State, and you I will be ready to provide logistic support for you. So he made that point clear that he was ready to support him in terms of logistics uh, to campaign in River State. And I think in his heart, he also believes that Obi um, is one of the best in the race, if not the best. You know, uh, he didn't say he was the best, but the way he spoke, he clearly rates Obi very high among the 18 presidential candidates. Uh, but you and I know that Obi has not got structures in many states across our country. He has not even got contest contestants to fill some of the very important, very, uh, I mean, his Labour Party has not got contestants to fill some of the very important um, positions in the states. And Anambra, I mean, uh, Rivers is not a deception. Because they've not got the structures, they don't stand a chance in River State. Wiki has made the PDP extremely strong in River State, winning to his side some of the very strong former uh, APC uh, supporters, uh, APC members. I, I said recently on um, Journalist Angle that I was sure that Wiki will make Chris uh, fine bone the next Commissioner for Information in River State. Chris Feinborn had been the spokesperson of the APC in River State for years, but eventually got him to recite, and we came in him a commissioner designate, and I knew that he could be the next commissioner for information in River State. I said it on the program that I was sure uh, it, it would be the next commissioner for information, and that's what we've seen. Wiki has made Chris Feinborn one of Amici's uh, strong supporters, the, uh, the information commissioner for Rivers. Not only that, T.D. Lloyd, who for many years could die for, for Amici, is now a local government chairman in River State. You know, so Wiki is gradually turning Rivers to a one-party state by pulling powerful PDP, uh, powerful APC members into the uh, PDP net. So if for APC it will be impossible to win in Rivers, how can anyone imagine that Labour Party will go and win in River State? So that's why we can say, look, don't waste your time. Uh, I, I don't see the Labour Party candidates uh, doing well in the governorship election in River State. I do not also see their candidates do well in the National Assembly elections and the, and the uh, state legislature uh, elections. That is what it is. That is uh, the reality. They've not got structures and they are surrounded by formidable opponents and, and the the outcome of an election involving the Labour Party in River State is very, very predictable. You don't need the soothsayer to tell you where the pendulum of victory uh, swing. And that's what we get. Uh, All right. Well, um, so many issues on and, and a lot of reactions. Strength. Right, so many issues and a lot of reactions on um, our YouTube channel. Let me try to see if I can ferret yes. 
through some of the comments here. What do you say about the statement um, of Obi made? Vote PDP governorship and vote me as president. Yes, I think there he was trying to, you know, uh, follow protocol, uh, follow the established protocol, and uh, referring to governorship candidate of the PDP and saying the incoming governor, something like that. He was just being sensible. He knows that in the presidential election, there is no decision made yet by, by Wiki and his people. Wiki has a candidate, the accountant general of his state. That's his candidate for the governorship election. He's um, determined to do his best to ensure that that candidate becomes the next governor of the state. This is the reason he has refused to leave the party. Because if he left the party to join the APC, APC already had a candidate and he will be obligated to support the APC's candidate. So he's not prepared to do that. So he would rather remain in his own party and uh, forge the electoral victory of his own pre preferred candidate, the accountant general of, um, of um, River State. Now, Obi knows that for the presidential election, Wiki is not likely to support Atiku. He's, he's made this point clear. He sees Atiku as an enemy, especially after Atiku made Governor Tambua the Director General of the uh, Atiku Kowa campaign. As far as he's concerned, he's an enemy of the state that Atiku has chosen. So that has even made matters worse for Atiku. So they've made their point clear. The governor of your state has said that they will not support Atiku in the presidential election. The governor of um, Benue State has said clearly that nothing will make them support Atiku in the presidential election. So as far as OB is concerned, there is an opportunity there. So he's gone to rivers a number of times now. He's met with those G5 governors. He wants them to adopt him as the presidential candidate of choice. Remember, even Otom also said that um, OB is best for Nigeria at this time. So is is win those governors and is trying to trade off the governorship candidate of Labour Party, who in any case will never be able to win the election, to give um, Governor Wike good reasons to back him for the presidency, since he's not likely to back the candidate of his own party, which is PDP. So it's a sensible political move that is making that look. I am good enough for the uh, presidency. Give me your votes for the presidency. Vote for my Oga, which is Wike, for the uh, vote for my Oga's candidate, which is the PDP candidate for the governorship election. So just uh, trying to position himself and um, reaching for the, the most probable and the most realistic uh, uh, straw, this whole uh, palaver. Yeah. Okay, so Bikio, uh, because of our time, we should talk about the very last topic that we scheduled for conversation today. It's yet another opportunity for yeah. Africa to prove its worth at the prestigious soccer event holding in Qatar, Cameroon, Morocco, Tunisia, Ghana, and Senegal. African representatives, actually. So, do you see any of the African representatives surpassing previous record? I think if there is any African team, any African nation in this contest that can do well, it has to be Senegal. Senegal is, for years now, the best team out of this continent. It's a tragedy that Sergio Mane who is an African player who, who um, was even nominated for the Ballon d'Or Prize. 
was injured just days to the World Cup, and they will not be able to take part in this World Cup. It's such a tragedy because that's their best player. It's Africa's best player, two-time African footballer of the year. It's not going to take part in this um, this contest. The last time that Senegal took part, remember Senegal equaled the the record, which is getting to the quarterfinals. Frank, I mean. Um, Senegal reached the quarterfinals when Japan hosted the tournament. Ghana also reached the quarterfinals. Unfortunately, Senegal was ousted from the last tournament in 2018 because they recorded more yellow cards than Japan. So these uh, Senegalese, they are very good players. You look at the Ghanaian team, they are not as fast as the Ghanaian teams of old. You look at the Tunisian team, there are no outstanding players that you can count on your fingertips. This is not, they, they, they are not really uh, strong like they used to be. You know? So Senegal represents Africa's best hope with people like uh, Eduardo, the goalkeeper of Chelsea. Uh, Ismail Assad of Watford, um, Khalidu, Kulibali, so many good players, good, extremely skillful African players doing well in top clubs in Europe. I don't know how far they can go in replacing Sadio Mane. I know it will be tough to replace such a very capable player, but if they can find a way around that, around this injury, then Senegal can still go far in this World Cup. Senegal looks like the, the, the former Ivorian team had so many good players, but uh, in the case of the Ivorians, they didn't really rise to their full potential. But the Senegalese team, even when they were... Um, they, Enter the World Cup for the first time. They did very well. They did very well. So with that experience, I expect that they will be able to do well this time. Uh, Cameroon has Cameroon plays with a lot of determination. It's the typical African team play with so much grit. But whether at this level, the Gober Songs team can shine against the best from all over the world, only time will tell. Uh, but that's a team, that's, uh, Cameroon is a country that you dare not write off. Cameroon defeated Brazil with nine players, you know, in the Olympics. They won, they won Olympic gold. Even with two players given red card, they managed to hang on. So the Cameroonians are, are, are noted for their robust football and they have so much strength. Uh, so I expect them to give their best, but generally speaking, the Senegal that represent the best uh, opportunity for us, and they are also lucky to be in a good group, you know? So even if they get beaten by Netherlands, <laughs> they are still going to qualify because uh, yeah. of the good fortune of being in a, a very favorable uh, group. And uh, thankfully too, we have a situation in which an African woman be one of the three center referees in the tournament. Three center referees. Uh, Africa is represented by a woman from Rwanda. This is significant that all over the world, just, from all over the world, there are just three center referees who are yeah, women yeah. who will take part in this tournament, and one of them happens to be an African. He's, um, it's something to be happy about. You look at Tunisia, in their group, you have France, you have Denmark. Yeah. There's no way, yeah. except a miracle happens, that they are going to be able to come out of that. Of course, Ghana uh, has Portugal, Uruguay, uh, their group. 
That is a very tough group. Talking about Cameroon, they have to grapple with Brazil, Switzerland, and Serbia. It is a very tough group for the Gobel Song and his team. So I just hope that they will, in spite of all that, be able to uh, give their best. I'm not excited about the World Cup. Maybe one of the reasons is the fact that Nigeria is not uh, represented, but Nigerian football has been going steadily down. That Portuguese team did not deserve to beat Nigeria with four replied goals. But our football has been going down steadily. We need a very decisive, very knowledgeable uh, coach with track record. And we need an NFA where, I mean, an NFF, where the leaders are concerned about the future of the sport rather than the money that they can make. Uh, by, by, by being uh, decision makers uh, for our football. It's time for us to rise again as a country. This is a time for rebuilding. The team that will play the next World Cup, we ought to start rebuilding that team now. There's no, no need to waste time. Yes, we have lost our opportunity. We won't be at the World Cup. Yet Nigeria has some of the best players in the world, some of the best players in, uh, in Africa. But we put ourselves where we are and we can't blame anybody. So I wish the African teams well, especially Cameroon. Yeah. Okay. Because Ghana, we... I don't think they can go far. The last time Ghana got to the quarterfinal and they needed um, unsportsmanlike conduct yeah. by the Uruguayan player Suarez to get them eliminated. You know? Mm. But um, I don't think Ghana has that kind of team now. That kind of mm. team, the blending, the harmony in their play, they don't have it at this time. No, apart from Thomas Partey, no solid player in that Ghanaian team. Man. Thomas mm. Partey cannot do much alone in that midfield. He's going to face the best midfielders in the world. It's going to be really tough. Mm. Right, Biko, um, we need to go, but um, let me try to see if I can, because a lot of people are actually commenting, but some of the, comment, some of the things you have said about, um, uh, about the World Cup, some people have actually commented in that regard, so I don't need to you know, reinvent the wheel. So, but a lot of people are actually you know, jumping at their throats on the issue of um, Peter Obi and stuff, and some of the things that you said. Fabian Akeze is saying, would Peter Obi remain a member of the Labour Party after he loses the presidential election? Would Peter Obi return to the PDP if he's, if, he, if he's offered the presidential ticket in the future? Uh, another person says here that, um, Babajide, I'm not surprised, or I'm surprised that you are still talking about structure. That's a favor, Itioma. He says, labor will surprise so many people. You think governors can still influence electorate on them? That will be your final reaction on the show. I've not said governors will influence. When we talk about structures, we are not simply talking about governors. We are talking about the lowest rung of politics. If you do not, our, our policy thrives on mobilization. On election day, many people don't come out. But parties that have structures, at the lowest level, including wards, they will be able to mobilize their people, get them outside on election day, and they will also be able to monitor voting. Some of these parties that are not represented in different parts of our country, they won't even be able to provide um, uh, election, uh, what's it called? Um, People who can verify things at voting centers to ensure that their party is not cheated. They won't even be able to have such volunteers because they do not have structures. You go to some of the distant states in the north. They do not have structures there. No one is saying that the party has not got the same party of Nigerians. There is something that a lot of our people do not get right. 
Obi has the sympathy of a good number of our people, especially young people. They believe that it represents change. They believe that it's more decent than the other people. But you cannot win elections if you do not have structures. I've been covering elections since 1999. I know what I'm talking about. I may not have been voting, but I cover elections and I know a lot about politics in our country. I sit with decision makers in the politics of our country. Some of them ask for my opinion. Some of them ask me, Gide, who do you think will win here? And many times, I am successful at actually predicting who will win in this place and in that place. Even top politicians call me to ask. So if I'm saying that if you do not have structures, that you will not be able to win in some states, that is a fact. And time will prove whether we are saying the truth or not. So he has to, Obi has to go down now, ensure that he puts together a team of volunteers in different parts of the country who will be able to monitor elections for him at the at even the world level, at polling station level, so that they do not do that compromise will not happen. But where you can you do not even have your own volunteers to man polling stations because the structures to make sure that those guys are cascaded down. Those structures are not there. You are not going to find it easy to win an election. This is Nigeria. This is not the UK. Even in America, there are people that they call get out the votes. There are people go out on election day, knocking on people's doors, and getting them to go and vote on election days. Parties that do that effectively are the parties that usually win election in the US. And they commit so much funds to it. So this is the thing. You can't simply win an election because people have sympathy for you. No. It's, the election is not simply an emotional thing. It, you have to strategize. You have to have the right strategies. You have to take the best decision. It's those best decisions that will lead you to victory. It's not simply by emotion or simply abusing people. No. That's not how it works. Yeah. The structures yeah. are important. This election will show to us that structures are important. We that are saying structures are important, we are not fools. Absolutely. We have too. seen elections in our country and yeah. how it is done, how it is, how the elections are conducted. So mm -hmm. it's not, uh, if anyone tells, tells you that structures are not important, that person does not know what he's saying. That person needs to go mm -hmm. to school and learn about politics in our own country. Mm -hmm. Ours is a peculiar situation. If you don't have the people to work for you, especially at the local government and and what level you are going to have difficulties it's not enough to simply have people who love you want to vote for you no those <laughs> structures are important yeah i think um and now is actually um is actually in support with your position uh he's saying something here that structure is having multiple candidates under your ticket that will help you drive out votes Bobby says abandon that structure in river state there's actually another comment that I saw that actually agree in total with what you said, but I don't think I can find that. But then we just need to call it a wrap on the show today. And that's our show for today's edition of Issues with GD. Special thanks to you, Baba GD Kolado Studio, for those insightful analyses, as always, all the way from Kogi State, I believe. wish you a safe journey back home, PKO. And thanks to you too, our audience, for joining us on every edition. You can see the program again anytime by subscribing to our YouTube channel, TVC News Nigeria. Click on the subscribe button to get the latest information. You can also follow us on our social media platforms at TVC News NG, and also at Ibrahim TVC News. On behalf of the rest of the team, I'm Ibrahim Shita. See you again next edition. Bye-bye now. <laughs>